हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज मॉरियन एम्पायर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मॉरियन एम्पायर राइज ऑफ द मॉरियन एम्पायर रूलर्स एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सीलेंस एडिक्ट ऑफ अशोक आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ द मॉरियन एम्पायर एंड लास्टली द लायन कैपिटल सारनाथ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मूविंग ऑन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द मॉरियन एम्पायर चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य हु फाउंडेड द एम्पायर 321 ट्वेंटी वन बी सी ई एक्सटेंडेड कंट्रोल एज फार नॉर्थ वेस्ट एज अफगानिस्तान एंड बलूचिस्तान इज ग्रैंड सन अशोक आर्ग्यूएबली द मोस्ट फेमस रूलर ऑफ अर्ली इंडिया कॉनकट कलिंगा दैट इज प्रेजेंट डे कोस्टल ओडिशा हिस्टोरियंस हैव यूज अ वेराइटी ऑफ सोर्सेज टू रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द मॉरियन एम्पायर These include archaeological finds especially sculpture also valuable are contemporary works such as the account of Megasthenes a Greek ambassador to the court of Chandragupta Maurya which survives in fragments another source that is often used is the Arthashastra parts of which were probably composed by Kautilya or Chanakya traditionally believed to be the minister of Chandragupta Now let's discuss about rise of the Mauryan Empire. The Mauryan Empire marked a crucial period of political consolidation and cultural transformation in the Indian subcontinent. It emerged in the aftermath of the disintegration of the Nanda Empire, which ruled over much of northern India. Chandragupta Maurya, a young and ambitious warrior, successfully challenged the Nandas and established the Mauryan dynasty around 322 BCE. Through astute political maneuvers and military conquest Chandragupta expanded the empire's boundaries bringing vast regions of India under his rule However it was Ashok who truly transformed the Mauryan empire into a dominant power Ashok's reign is characterized by his conversion to Buddhism after the gruesome Kalinga war which left a profound impact on him Inspired by Buddhist principles, Ashok adopted a policy of non-violence, tolerance and moral governance. Now let's have a look at the rulers of Mauryan Empire. Chandragupta Maurya, he was the founder of the Mauryan Empire. His reign was marked by territorial expansion and the establishment of a centralized administration. Bindusara, 297 BCE to 272 BCE. Bindusara was Chandragupta's son and the second Mauryan emperor he continued his father's policies and expanded the empire further including the conquest of the deccan region bindusara's reign saw continued political consolidation and stability ashok the great 268 bce to 232 bce ashok the grandson of chandragupta maurya is perhaps the most renowned mauryan emperor Initially known for his military conquest including the brutal Kalinga war Ashok underwent a transformative change and embraced Buddhism Ashok's edicts inscribed through the empire provide invaluable sights into his rule and policies After Ashok the empire started to decline although there were four successors of Ashok Dasharath Samprati Shalishuka and Brihadratha Brihadratha was the last Mauryan emperor and his reign saw the decline and eventual disintegration of the empire Brihadratha's assassination marked the end of the Mauryan empire and subsequent regional powers emerged in different parts of India Now let's discuss about administrative excellence The Mauryan empire was known for its administrative excellence which contributed significantly to the empire's stability efficiency and governance The Mauryan administration implemented several key policies and institutions that played a crucial role in managing the vast territories under their control. If we examine the content of the inscriptions, we find virtually the same message engraved everywhere. According to Megasthenes, there was a committee with six sub-committees for coordinating military activity. The Mauryan administration consisted of skilled officials in various departments ensuring effective governance and decision making. The efficient Dharma Chakra Pravartan system facilitated rapid communication enhancing administrative control and response capabilities. And regular censuses and well maintained records provided valuable demographic and economic data for effective policy making. Now let's discuss about edicts of Ashok. 
Ashok was the first ruler who inscribed his messages to his subjects and officials on stone surfaces, natural rocks as well as polished pillars. He used the inscriptions to proclaim what he understood to be dhamma. This included respect towards elders, generosity towards brahmanas, treating slaves and servants kindly and respect for religions and traditions other than one's own. Most Ashokan inscriptions were in Prakrit language while those in the northwest of the subcontinent were in Aramaic and Greek. Most Prakrit inscriptions were written in the Brahmi script, however some in the northwest were written in Kharoshti. These edits provided invaluable insights into the empire's governance, law and societal structure. In 1838, James Princep, an officer of the East India Company, deciphered Brahmi and Kharosti, two scripts used in the earliest inscriptions and coins. He found that most of these mentioned a king referred to as Piyadasi, meaning pleasant to behold. There were a few inscriptions which also referred to the king as Ashok. Now let's discuss about art and architecture of the Mauryan Empire. Construction of stupas and viharas as part of monastic establishments became part of the Buddhist tradition. However, in this period, apart from stupas and viharas, stone pillars, rock-cut caves and monumental figure sculptures were carved at several places. The tradition of constructing pillars is very old and it may be observed that erection of pillars was prevalent in the Achaemenian Empire as well. The Mauryan pillars are rock-cut pillars, thus displaying the carver's skills, whereas the Achaemenian pillars are constructed in pieces by a mason. Stone pillars were erected by Ashok, which have been found in the north Indian part of the Mauryan Empire with inscriptions engraved on them. Large statues of Yakshas and Yakhinis are found at many places like Patna, Vidisha and Mathura. The rock-cut cave carved at Barabar Hills near Gaya in Bihar is known as the Lomas Rishi Cave. Now let's discuss about the lion capital Sarnath. The lion capital discovered more than a hundred years ago at Sarnath near Varanasi is generally referred to as Sarnath lion capital. This is one of the finest examples of sculpture from the Mauryan period. The capital originally consisted of five component parts. The shaft, which is broken in many parts now, a lotus bell base, a drum on the bell base with four animals proceeding clockwise, the figures of four majestic adossed lions and the crowning element, dharma chakra, that is a large wheel. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, prelims question. Who of the following had first deciphered the edicts of Emperor Ashok? George Buhler, James Princep, Max Muller or William Jones? And now mains question, Mauryan Empire was one of the greatest empires of ancient India. Discuss its contribution to Indian art and architecture. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.